Hi everyone, it's Gail. We are going to work on some journal covers and I am going to do a whole series on journal covers coming up. Uh, various types, uh, various techniques of making them. The videos won't all be in order, you know, like video, video, video of all the different things, but I'm going to do a journal, uh, journal cover series. And I have some other things to pop in between as far as videos go, but, um, we're going to start that today. But first I have a little housekeeping stuff that needs to be done. Let me get my laptop down here. Okay, so not last video, but the video before, I think, I showed some new digital prints that I had printed out. And in the comments, we had uh, some comments about uh, antique papery and ERV designs, not allowing you to share journals, uh, that not allowing you to sell journals that you use their digitals in. Well, um, Antique Papery has a big thing on her announcements on her Etsy that yes, you can. So I wanted to tell you that. And then I chatted with Liz at ERV Designs and let her know about it too. And, um, when she started her Etsy, she, you know, she didn't have kind of that in mind. And, and so she did have that on her terms of use, but she's changed her terms of use. So let me quickly read them to you. Uh, her terms of use for ERV designs, yes, you can, unlimited personal use, use of the printed digital files to create physical products offered for sale. For example, use in journals, crafts, jewelry, or other products offered for sale. Sale of physical products made by you using digital files for small com commercial volumes not to exceed 300 units or pieces per year. And then please do not resell the digital files, original, altered digitally, or as part of a collection of digitals, or share with others. So um, she is working on her Etsy today. She's doing some um, updates and she said it might take a few minutes to get that policy on all her digitals, but that is what she's doing. So yes, you may use antique papery and ERV designs in journals that you intend to sell. So cleared that up. <laughs> So there's that. Um, we're going to get rid of this. Then the other thing that I wanted to let you know, um, this cool little Distress Ink applicator that you've seen me use in the past um, for the Distress Ink, uh, that is made by my pal Shell's husband, Clint. Uh, Shell and Clint are the Ram Rambling Crafter on YouTube and Etsy. Um, I kind of quit using this because I knew they were inundated with orders and they, they just, they just were kind of swamped. So, but you can get these again, all that to say. The Rambling Crafter on Etsy, I'll put her links, um, below the video. And then also, um, uh, Shell wanted me to remind you that she's doing a stash giveaway. So go over to our YouTube channel, The Rambling Crafter, if you want to enter that. Okay, so I think that is the housekeeping stuff that is done. So the cover we're going to do today, we're going to use, um, we're going to use this uh, product box. I have cut this so that it's nine by six, which is um, uh, the kind of the size I prefer my, my, um, my journals to be uh inch and three quarter spine here so and i'm going to put this fabric on the back on the front and then um and then line it with this coffee dyed fabric that i'm i don't remember if i did it or if my friends carolyn and candy sent me that but anyway some cool coffee dyed for on the inside and this is going to be for my next project which is a um design team project yay for crafty cat usa uh amy and her wonderful digitals and um i love these because the ornamental and fruit trees and everything they go perfectly with my own digital kit the orchardist 
So that's what the journal is going to be as we go along here. And then I made this a while back. This is a piece of the coffee dyed muslin that's on freezer paper that is sold by Mary at Three Insistent Dogs on Etsy. So I'll get everybody in the description box below so you can, can see, but I'm going to incorporate that into one of the signatures. So anyway, that's what we're looking at. And I'll, oh yeah, I brought this down because I wanted to see, I might want to use a piece of the ephemera kind of on the cover. I wasn't sure. I wasn't quite sure. So I've got pockets. What else do I have? I have these little things. And this one. I really like that one too. Okay. I don't know. I can't decide. So at the moment. So whatever we put on the cover, we'll have to glue is my thought there. And we may not put anything. I mean, we may just have the pretty fabric. So let's get started making this cover. Gosh, I'm going to try and I've got a list started of the different covers that I want to make. Faux leather, um, out of a Reader's Digest book, uh, uh, vintage books. Um, I kind of was inspired to, m well, I've been wanting to make some covers. I have some fabric and different things that I really want to make into covers. And I thought if I get them all made up, then as digitals come along or papers or whatever, I'll have a cover all ready to go. So that is what I kind of started off thinking. And then I watched a video by um, Jessica Rapp at Two Silver Oranges, where she made a bunch of naked journals, you know, no embellishing on the inside. And, um, I thought, you know, I have so much stuff for covers. If I got a whole bunch of covers made, maybe I could, maybe I could do that. So anyway, that's kind of the scoop. So what I've done first is of course, prepare this, um, by cutting it the size that I wanted. And then I cut the fabric, um, about not quite an inch, probably larger than then my um my base cover because my thought is I want to sew on the fabric around so I'm not sewing through the cardboard that's the plan anyway we'll see how it works out <laughs> gotta move my water okay so what I want to do next is I want to take my my inside my coffee dyed stuff here and I think, I think this is lovely and grungy. I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to lay this on here and cut it approximately the same size-ish because we can, we can trim later. Um, but another thing I was going to tell you is one time... I made a journal with using this technique covering a card bar box and I got a rather pointed comment about that you know that box is going to disintegrate well I'm not sure I agree with that it's going to be covered in fabric if you know usually people don't get their journals wet so I, I think that might be an unfounded fear. <laughs> I, I realize cardboard can deteriorate, but um, I, think, I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so get rid of this cloth. And so now I have my inside and my outside. So I'm going to set this one aside. And what we're going to do first is I am going to, I'm going to Fabri-Tac this down a bit. So I think I want to lay it this way. Um, so that I can see that I have kind of an even edge around. Okay, so 
And I'm just going to fabric tack it a bit in the middle just to make sure that it holds. Um, because it is going to be sewn. That's, it's not a big deal to have a bunch. And I'm just doing a thin, very thin coating of it. Just like so. Okay. And then I'm going to hopefully place this right where I want it. We'll see how that works out. Um, right about, I'm going to call it right about there. Okay. That's great. Okay. And then which side of this do I want out? I think I want this side out. So I'm going to take my cover and I flip this over to the wrong side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do a skiff of the fabric tack just to hold things, hold things where, where we're wanting them to be. And again, I'm I'm thinning this out kind of because I don't want glops because especially on the coffee uh, on the coffee dyed it could show through so I'll just give it a little and just kind of thinning it out you could use a credit card to thin it out but I don't think it's necessary at this moment to do that so okay now we're gonna just Place this so the fabrics meet up pretty much. Okay. All right. I hope, yep, I think I have enough in my bobbin. We'll hope so. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is sew around those edges. And this, um, this, this is kind of an upholstery fabric weight and it definitely needs some, um, it needs some fray check on the edges for sure. Cause I've got a little wrinkle right there and I'm, so I'm going to put a little more fabric tack right there. Try to get that to lay down. More flat. More flat. Okay, so we're going to bring the sewing machine over here. <laughs> I got another comment, you guys, about how often I say so. Gotta love it. Oh, man. So, so... <laughs> I think it's a Montana thing. I do. And, um, you know, sometimes you can't help where you're from. One, two, three. Okay, I'm on zigzag. One, two, three. I'm on zigzag. Let's. Now I'm in a. I'm doing this kind of by feel. I'm just feeling the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to try. Let me scoot my chair a little bit so I'm at a better angle. And I'm just going to try to go alongside the cardboard. Guys, I'm going to run into something over here because of trying to do this on camera, but we'll deal with that here in a second. I'm just going to have to hold it for a second, I think. Now, I do think that my sewing machine would probably 
would probably go through the uh, cardboard, but I'm a little skittish as it just got back from the shop after enduring abuse from its owner. Okay, maybe one more. Okay. All right. Uh-oh. What do we got going on? Oh, of course, I've got the machine on the thread. That's That happens all the time. Okay, I need to go a little further feeling the... And I've got the needle down so I can kind of manipulate it as I want to. I'm just going to go one more, not one more stitch, but one more zig. <laughs> okay, that feels pretty good. So let's... I'm kind of smoothing the inside as I go here. So let's... My little sewing machine sounds so much happier than it did when it was not happy with its owner. I can't really use the fabric as um, a guide because, you know, it's not cut perfectly straight. So it's definitely a sew by feel. Kind of got a spot right here on my foot that I'm trying to run the uh, cardboard along the side of. Okay, feeling the edge again. I think that's pretty good. Sorry if this is jiggling the camera. Okay, I'm off a little bit. There we go. See, I think I might need to go one more there. Okay, last side. It's kind of like watching paint dry, isn't it? Sorry about that, but it's part of the process. I've been asked to do a beginning sewing tutorial and I think that's a great idea. So, um, so that might be coming. But I am, I'm excited about making this journal and I'm excited about doing a store of covers to have. That's going to be great. Okay, sorry guys, I'm running into things back back there um, because I am trying to stay on camera for y'all. I'm just going to backstitch that corner a little bit. Pattern's very busy, so you won't even really see it. Okay. So there we go with the sewing part. I think that's all we're going to need to sew, but we'll see. Um, all right. So now what I want to do is so sorry. I hit the, hit the overhead there. Make sure I didn't knock you off. Okay. I'm going to zoom you in slightly. Okay, so now let's cut this evenly and um, and closer to the stitching. Um, 
think I'm going to start here because this, this right here is pretty close to the edge. So since I cut my box to um, nine by six, this little bit of sewing on the edge is going to make it probably nine and a half by six and a half, I would guess. Yeah, see that? That is great. Okay. This is working out just as I had hoped. That's got some fraying, so I'm going to try and cut that off. But we're getting close to the stitching, too, so it's, it's sort of a trying to do both. Okay. Now, the great thing about using this product packaging is, you know, we all have that. It's not something that, you know, you need to have as a, that's kind of a cool, cool piece. I might keep that, <laughs> put it in the, in the bits. Okay, let me grab my freight check. And we're going to go around the edges, but let me show you before I get it all wet with the fray check. I think this is going to be my front, like so. There it is. There's our little cover. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do two or three signatures in this. I'm not sure. And there's the inside. Ooh, that's yummy grungy, isn't it? Okay, so... Freycheck and Freycheck is on my website. My website to get to Gail's favorite things is always in the description box. So if you need some of this, it is on there. And this stuff is great because it's got this handy dandy little um, applicator type thing. So I'm just going to put my fabric. Let me see if you can. Okay, there you can see. See how it's got just kind of that little gap there. I'm going to put both of my fabrics in the middle of that and go around the edge. And you kind of have to, it's just like any other glue, you kind of have to tip it to get it going. And then you can kind of see that it's wet on the edge. And we're just going to go around you know it might be easier actually to see on the muslin side so i'm going to do that maybe it's easier for me to see and for you to see and so then that is going to adhere those two fabrics together as well as as well as keeping the edges from fraying now sometimes you want might want a little fray but i don't on this one so we're just gonna go all the way around it super easy and super effective I love this stuff okay thus it's one of my favorite things because <laughs> I love it all righty um, let me get back on track here And then we just have to set this aside to dry. That's all we have to do. There's a little, little guy that wants to fray. So we're going to just stop him before he gets started.
and that'll just seep down in between these and dries clear and you're good to go and yeah so there we go okay I am going to set that aside to dry but we have got we have got our cover so fun okay so let's see where are we time wise we're at 25 minutes okay well these may end up just being a little bit shorter videos because i um i just want to show making the covers really is what i want to do so i am going to set this aside to dry what i'll do is um probably probably in the you know the next time we we do one i'll show you after it's dry it's not going to look a lot different than this but you can see how it's kind of darker around the edges from that fray check and um i think i'm just gonna well it's a little sticky on my board let's see i think i'll just set it to the top a little bit just to dry and then i'll have to clean my um, glass board because it is like a glue so anyway there you go so that is the first one made out of packaging i think it's awesome and i love it and it's going to go great with my digis i think so so there you have it that's it that's it for now so um i will be back with more cover ideas for you uh in the next you know in the coming weeks anyway i'll have a few other videos along the way too oh i was going to show you guys this too i had this sticking out still um i got this all finished and um i sewed around the tag and everything this was prior to vacation so um i think i need to gesso this side i didn't realize i didn't put anything on there for writing so I think I, what I'll do is just gesso that a bit and that'll be that little project will be ready to go so loved that too okay guys I'm out of here I'm so used to an hour that this feels weird <laughs> but hopefully it will make the pe people happy that t say my videos are too long so thanks everybody so much R remember that Antique Papery, ERV Design. You can sell the journals you make with their digitals. And then also go check out the Rambling Crafter for her giveaway and to get the cool um, ink applicator handle. Okay, everybody. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.